Good morning, Guyana. Welcome to the program for today. It is the 18th of May in the year 2015. My name is Hannah Duncan. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. It is an auspicious day um, for the country and for us over here. First look, uh, this morning we'll get the opportunity to meet Guyana's 8th Executive President, the Honorable David Arthur Granger. We got to talk to him uh, for just about 10 minutes or so. We were lucky enough um, to steal some of his time this morning and uh, we'll get to talk about some of those issues that um, you probably uh, caught on your stomach. It is a privilege for us over here because this is the first time an executive president is on the program first look and this is his first uh, appearance on a live television program. We're honored and we're blessed. Good morning sir, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. We're happy that, that you've returned. Well, it's good to be back. You know, I've been here before and I'll be back again. Great, I'm looking forward to that. Let's get the ball rolling. Um, you're now the eighth executive president. Um, how does that feel? What's that feeling like within? Is it any different uh, from when you were in the opposition? Well, it's going to be different because I now have the support of the majority of the population to do the things that they wanted done. And that's why I'm here. That's why they elected me. Um, it's a feeling of great responsibility. And I expect to discharge that responsibility. And as I said uh, at my inauguration, I'll be a good president. I've had the opportunity over the last five years to visit you know, scores of communities in all 10 regions. And I have a good idea what the people have been asking for. So it's a, with a sense of humility, but also a sense of responsibility that I take up this job at this point in time. When that announcement was made by GCOM, where were you? Well, as you know, it was a long, slow week, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, there have been a series of announcements. I was at the campaign headquarters in Crunk Street. Mm -hmm. What did your wife, uh, Mrs. Granger, say to you when the announcement was made? Well, was she wasn't with me at that time. Mm -hmm. What was The people who were with me were supporters at the campaign headquarters, mm -hmm. and there's a loud wow, you know. Um, but of course, she's very happy. She's been with me on the campaign trail, and our entire family is very happy. Just as the country, I think, is happy that there's been a change from the former government. You drove yourself to church yesterday. Well, how did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I normally drive myself to church. Um, I, the distance is very short. It's about a kilometer away from where I live. Mm -hmm. So I don't see the need for drivers and security. Is that going to continue? <laughs> it depends on the situation. But normally, I prefer to go to worship and a simple frame of mind rather than something fussy. Mm -hmm. Of course, you don't know your father of two. That's correct. Okay, two girls. Yes. Okay, they're here, they, they came here or they're here for, for this moment? No, one uh, is married, lives, works here, and the other is in Canada. But she should be coming back for the formal inauguration next week, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're both I, grown, you know, they're both grown. Okay, um, have you called um, the former president? No, nor has he called me. The last time I spoke with him was on Friday night, the night before the swimming in. What was the conversation about? Do you care to share? I wouldn't. I, would not, I don't care to disclose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going forward. It, it wasn't about congratulations. It was not, it was not about It was that. not about congratulations. No. Uh, you stretch for the olive branch to the um, former administration. Um, have they accepted? No, there's no indication of acceptance. In fact, I saw an article in the paper which indicated that there would be no acceptance of any invitation to join the administration. Are you worried My about view, that? Uh, I am disappointed, not surprised, but this is a moment that Guyana has been waiting for. It's a moment that we should regard as the start of a process of building national unity, as a process of, of uh, creating what I call inclusionary democracy and rejecting um, the winner-takes-all mentality. And I think it's an opportunity missed. It's like, a, I suppose, like a cricketer dropping the ball, that um, it may not come again. What happened in 2011 and 2015 is that the people changed. They stopped thinking race and started thinking about issues. And this would be a good moment for the PPP and for former President Ramatar to uh, send a message to his supporters that we want Guyana to move forward and we're prepared to join this movement for national unity mm -hmm. rather than stay on the sidelines and uh, 
complain and carp and criticize. When your tenure uh, would have come to an end, possibly um, two tenures, probably, um, what was the legacy you're hoping that you can leave behind with the Guyanese people? Um, three things. One, um, that there'll be universal literacy, that we'll be a completely literate population, a well-educated population. Two, that um, poverty would be abolished, that there would be no extremely poor people, and that young people would be um, employed, full employment. And those are the three things I wish for most of all. You know, good education, um, abolition of poverty, and good employment, you know. I really want to see every single Guyanese child, no matter how poor his or her background in school. I really want to see that. And if at the end of my tenure, I can go through the streets, go through the villages and see nobody liming, nobody skull came from school, nobody, no children selling papers during school hours and all that, I'd be very, very happy. Do you plan on getting into those communities um, within Georgetown, outside of Georgetown, how, how, how soon? I've been in and out of the communities for the last five years. I think I've campaigned in more communities than any other single person over the last three months in particular. In Rupununi alone, I've gone over 20 villages. In, on the coast, by last, between August and December, I did about 40 villages. I don't always um, publicize my, my um, visits, but I've been engaging with communities on the coastline and in, in the hinterland, and I'll continue. People are asking already, um, they want to know about reduction of taxes, housing in initiatives, housing programs, and, and so on. What is it that people need to understand at this point in time? The party did lay out a 100-day um, you know, plan, but in all of that, what people should understand? Well, people are right in expecting change. That's what they voted for. They don't want to see a continuation of the PPP regime. And we intend to fulfill the promises we made. Um, I want to see a strong public service and strong security services. If they're not well paid, they wouldn't perform well. So I will pay them better. Um, I want to see a reduction in the high cost of living, particularly for women who have to run households. And uh, it means a reduction in the cost of food, particularly. Um, and we hope to remove the tax or change the tax threshold so that maybe persons who are gaining what we would call a very low income would not have to pay income tax at all. We want to reduce the value added tax, and they, that may have an impact particularly on food. Uh, reduce the toll on the Burbies River Bridge. There are specific things we want to do, but they're mostly concerned with giving people, giving households, giving poor people an opportunity to get into, um, I would say, a more comfortable frame of life and improve their quality of life. And once that is done, we feel there'll be more children going to school, better education, better employment. I would call it a virtual cycle. Remove poverty and then you get more education, better employment, and so it goes. If we stay at the present level with so many poor people, we will never progress. Too many people are just locked out of development because, you know, they just live hand to mouth. They get $37,000 or whatever it is, and all they can do is hustle to get some food. They can't rent proper quarters. They can't bring up their children. They can't educate their children properly. They can't get transport uh, to various destinations. Poverty is a big restraint on development, and I would like to see the abolition of poverty, absolute poverty that we have in this country. How great is the task you foresee ahead of you? Well, it is a great task um, for two reasons. One, because of the mess that was made by the PPP over the last 23 years, and it will not be easy to overcome that task. And the second thing is, um, because of the high rate of migration, as you know, Guyana's population has been falling, and uh, it is now lower in 2015 than it was in 1995 or 2005. A lot of the people who've migrated are talented, educated people, and yes, a big task will be getting sufficient uh, human resources, sufficient educated people to turn the economy around. I would like to see more engineers, more scientists, but where would they come from? You know, we've got to ask Guyanese, particularly Guyanese in the diaspora, to lend us their capital, lend us their human capital, and of course financial capital, to help to turn things around. It wouldn't be easy, 
But I would say that the biggest problem would lie in the availability of human capital. Talented people who can uh, bring their energies and their enthusiasm and their effort to turning Guyana around. Would your administration continue projects like the um, airport expansion, the four-lane highway and things like that? We have committed to examine them. Um, our main problem with the airport was one of priority. Some uh, had to be cancelled by the former president himself, for example, the Speciality Surgical Hospital. Uh, we can't continue that because it's dead. You know, he killed it. We can't continue the Mile Falls Hydropower Road because Ramatar killed it. We can't continue the fiber optic cable as it is because it's dead. You know, we didn't do these things. You know, the president um, is the former president is responsible for these uh, spoiled or broken or flawed projects. So I can't commit myself to continue something that is not worth continuing. Mm -hmm. I will have to look at them. The administration will have to look at them. And we have priorities of our own. We want to see a, a reliable bridge over the Demerara Harbor, over the Demerara River. Most of our working people come into Georgetown over that bridge every day. And if that bridge collapses, Georgetown will grind to a halt. So we want to see good transport infrastructure. And building a Marriott Hotel or building a specialty hospital is not priority on our list. Um, have you had a chance to find out how are we doing financially? Not as yet. As you know, I was only sworn in on Saturday. So but, but, but information, the <laughs> flow of information... 48 you know, hours, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um We do believe that um, it would be difficult to find the funds uh, in the short term. The former government has been very cunningly, but not lawfully, moving funds state funds which should be going into what is called a consolidated fund, into various accounts, um, so they could be spent without the supervision or the approval of the National Assembly. Uh, we will put a lot of emphasis on appointing a Minister of uh, Finance very soon, so that we can get a budget out, hopefully within uh, another 60 days. and. Uh, we expect that by that time we'll know where the money is. But the whole idea is to bring the money back into the budget so that it could be properly accounted for. All right, um, in closing quickly, two more questions. There's, there's, there's lots of talks that equipment and so on would have moved out from some government offices. As president, head of state, if you find out that that did happen, will persons be whole um, culpable? Well, if you take something that doesn't belong to you, it's theft, <laughs> and theft is a crime. Uh, I, I am not um, witch hunting, but it is unlawful to remove um, state property without permission. And if people remove cars or computers or anything else, you know, I'll send the police um, to get it back and you know to ask them questions. And um, if they committed crimes, they'll, they'll be um, prosecuted in accordance with the law. It's not a witch hunt, but. A crime is a crime. I like that. All right, and in closing, you have not named your cabinet as yet. This is going to take some time. Um, there are certain procedures that has um, to be followed before that happens. That's correct. We are in discussions now. Um, as you know, it's a six-party coalition. I am obliged to consult with my colleagues, my partners. So I'm not um, going to make announcements about individual persons or names until um, my... Uh, Shadow Cabinet, or the, the committee that was set up for that purpose, uh, makes a decision. But we would like to feel that the earliest priority should be in the areas of security and finance, and the others will follow. But we've got to find the money, we've got to pe keep people safe. So in closing, what is it you want to leave with the Guyanese people? I want to leave our promise that uh, Guyana has turned the corner. It will be better governed. It will be... Um, inclusionary, that we are not in the business of winner takes all, we're not in the business of, of locking people out of government, even though uh, APNU plus AFC won 51%, we, we cannot conceive locking out 49%. I would like a government of all of the people, and that is why I like to ask uh, former President Ramatar to reconsider his decision and join us so that we can build Guyana. This is not about party any longer, it's about Guyana and our children. That's my message.
Thank so much for being here. Thank you for Thank having you. me on first look no. on the first working day of my presidency. Yeah, we're blessed over here, y'all. All right, um, they're speaking with Ghana State Executive President, um, the Honorable David Arthur Granger. Stick around more still ahead on the program. <laughs>